Welcome to St. Stephen's. We gather here to help one another grow in love for neighbor, self, creation, and God. We're here in love and we're glad you're here. Whenever you are joining us, we hope this pre-recorded service of devotions finds you well. We have in-person worship here in Terre Haute on Sundays at 8 and 10 and Thursdays at noon. We also do a live stream of the 10 o'clock service on Facebook. Let us begin with the summary of the law. Jesus said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Our psalm today is Psalm 32. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no guile. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon my, me day and night. My moisture was dried up as in the sum, heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse or mule, which have no understanding, who must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. All the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the, that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. 
He was lost and is found. They began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, listen, for all these years, I've been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Now, this parable Jesus tells is of this lost son. We know it as the parable, parable of the prodigal son. It is perhaps Jesus' most famous parable. Artists throughout history have tried to capture its essence in paint and music for centuries. It is at once beautiful and tragic. As a teaching, it relies on a simple idea that we are bound to compare one another. And we will judge wastefulness as bad and loyalty as good every single time. What better way to write a story to illustrate that dynamic than to use two sons, right? The good one and the bad one, right? The older and the younger. Right? the wise and the impulsive. So Jesus casts the story perfectly and then upends all of our expectations. Even when we've read this story a thousand times, we fall for its spell every time. Each reading, the younger sounds petulant and stupid. The older as justified in his hurt. Right? We can't help it. It's automatic. It is striking when we realize that this is how everyone reads it. Because this is how the brothers would have experienced it. And that righteous anger at the younger brother seems less and less just when we imagine that Nobody has sympathy for him. Nobody, of course, except those who have been in his shoes. The best line, of course, is the last one. But this one, earlier in the story, carves at my heart. He would have gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating and no one gave him anything. This younger son, already punished by his actions and his separation, can find neither sympathy nor a simple handout. Nothing at all. Not a soul anywhere will give him scraps, even trash, not even one. The coldness with which we treat the beggar, right? part skepticism and part disdain, reveals our own sense of moral justification in refusing to be generous. And it reveals the thumb we naturally put on the scale in support of the older brother. 
that we might assume a man deserves to starve, or perhaps the fates should claim him. Even his death would leave the conscience clear, for he brought this upon himself. These, of course, are not moral positions, but sadistic ones. And it reveals how foreign the Father's celebration is from our own hearts. For it's far easier to imagine all the ways the older brother's frustrations make sense to us and ought to be excused than to consider that the younger may be reconciled to the Father, that we all ought to celebrate this, and that it is indeed a miracle. It's curious that we might struggle with something so near to God's heart. In the pause between the biddings to prayer, you are invited to add your own requests, either silently or aloud or in the chat. Let us offer prayers to God who has made us a new creation in Christ. Pray for the Holy Catholic Church throughout the world, sharing the death and resurrection of Christ. Remember especially the Church of the province of Myanmar, the Diocese of Brasilia, Haiti, and South Sudan, Good Samaritan, Brownsburg, and our 7th Street Church neighbors. Pray for all bishops, priests, deacons, all who minister in Christ, and all holy people throughout the world. Pray for all nations, peoples, tribes, clans, and families, especially for Ukraine and Russia. Pray for all who are oppressed, afflicted, or in need. Remember especially our local agencies who work to assist the homeless, our local food pantries and soup kitchens, especially manna from seven, our county jail, the federal penitentiary, and those in our parish family who have asked our prayers. Chip Chillington, Ellie Thomas, Pamela Reed, Sally Newland, Robin Rolt, Johnny Western, Adriana Stull, Robert Downs, Corinne Dewey, Justin Mendoza, Christine Chillington, and Alex Vincent. Pray for the dying and the dead. Pray for our families, friends, and companions, and for all those we love. For those celebrating birthdays, especially Kimberly Wagley, and for those celebrating baptismal anniversaries, especially Leona Taylor, Hudson Bryan, and Sarah Bryan. Blessed are you, God of the Israelites, who, gave, who gives your people food and drink. Receive the prayers we offer this day and invite us to the feast of life. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, 
and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Look down in mercy, Lord, on your people who kneel before you, and grant that those whom you have nourished by your word and sacraments may bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.